love enthusiasm. And especially when it comes to learning the good word of the Lord, understanding what the Lord wants us to know for the hour in which we live. I believe it's very important. Can you say amen? amen? It is very important. Now we are studying the total man. Say the total man. Total man. Uh, as I've told you a number of times, there are three great uh, dominions out there of knowledge. One of them is a knowledge of God, and you don't begin to live till you know God. And the other is a knowledge of your fellow man, and you're having problems and problems and problems until you know your fellow man. Almost every time you turn around, somebody's having a problem with another human being, mostly because he doesn't understand that human being. But the, the greatest area of knowledge, I shouldn't say that really, uh, God is the greatest area of knowledge to know, but the, one of the most important areas of knowledge is to know yourself. And that's what the total man is all about. We are studying at this point the regenerated spirit of the, of the human person, the regenerated spirit. This means a part of you that comes alive at the spiritual birth when you become a child of God. I want to read to you from Ephesians chapter 2, uh, verses 1 and 2, please. And let us read those together first. In Ephesians chapter 2, uh, the great apostle says to the church in Ephesus, You hath he quickened. And that word quickened is an old English word uh, that means it's shaking, it's alive, it's moving, it is not dead. You hath he brought to life. You hath he quickened who were dead. You were dead, but you are now alive. And he, he brought you from the dead that were dead in trespasses and sins. Now that I would con consider one of the great verses of the Bible uh, that we find our natural state in that we were dead, inanimate, not moving, uh, not alive. And the Holy Spirit uh, quickened us, made us to come alive in our inner person, and that we who were dead in trespasses and sins, God hath enlivened us, made us alive. Something that was not, he made it to be. Uh, uh, something that had no life, he gave it life. In verse 2 it says, Wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. He showed them what they were and what they became through the quickening of the spirit. That is what we're studying, the regenerated spirit. In the book of Romans, chapter 14 and verse 17, uh, the word of God uh, tells us very explicitly that the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. Our, our natural things, our mundane things, our things pertaining to uh, that which is of this earth material, but the kingdom of God is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. And, and Jesus said, and the kingdom of God is within you. And that the kingdom of God does not come uh, with something that's beholden and something that's seen, something that's materialized. But the kingdom of God is, is God's Holy Spirit bringing to you God's righteousness through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then bringing you God's peace and bringing you God's joy. And in doing that, you have the regenerated spirit. You have the spirit that's born again by the power of God. And maybe... Maybe John chapter 3 is even stronger than those. Let's look at John chapter 3, beginning in verse 1. It says, Nicodemus, a Pharisee and a ruler of the Jews, came to Jesus by night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Now Jesus responded and said unto him, Verily, I tell you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. It's very remarkable that Jesus did not reply to his utterances when he said, Now we know that you are a rabbi. We know that you are a teacher. We know that you came from God. 
uh, you do these miracles and we recognize them. Jesus did not respond to that. He responded to his need. He said, you must accept a man, be born again. He cannot enter the kingdom. Now, Nicodemus, who was a ruler of the Jews, uh, who was a man high in religion, says, how can a man be born when he's old? He found difficulties there. He might have been 90 years old at that time. His mother would have been dead for a number of years. He said, now how can we get around to that? You know, men are always looking on the solical uh, areas of, of, of knowledge. Always. The natural man looks upon that thing which is natural. He says it cannot be done. How can he enter the second time in his mother's womb and be born? Verse 5, verily I say unto you, Jesus said, Except a man be born of the water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto you, ye must be born again. And then verse 8 says, And the wind bloweth whether it listeth, you hear the noise, but you cannot tell the, whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit, the regenerated Spirit. In the beginning of spiritual life, it is the receiving of God's own life into the human life. Now, that's what we're talking about. That's what being born again means. And uh, the great problem with the world and the church today is that we believe in belonging to the church, we believe in having religion, and we're not born again. That, that, that spirit must be within us that gives us the regenerated spirit. There's something that wasn't there before, something that's new in God, and that thing must become the king of our lives. It must become the dominating factor of our lives, and it's not the amount of knowledge we have in our heads. It's the amount of truth that flows through our inward parts that we are moved, motivated by the mighty spirit of the living God, and God wants us to live by our spirits and not by our damnic natures, not by the power of, of your mind, the power of your emotion, by the power of your will, but by the mighty, dramatic power of the Son of God that has come to dwell within us. If you believe it, say amen. amen. So in the beginning, uh, the spiritual life is the receiving of God's own life into our spirits. Spiritual life is not born by culture. It is not even born of religion. The Lord Jesus Christ specifically said, marvel not, <laughs> marvel not. Don't get shocked. Don't get upset. Old man, you got to be born again. And, and he said, I just don't understand it. And here this man uh, who was a, a preacher in Israel, a teacher in Israel himself, he said, I just don't understand it. It was, certainly was not his soul because he didn't understand the function of the Spirit. He says, I just don't understand this. And he says, what can I do about it? Jesus was saying, now listen, if we can get to your Spirit, and your Spirit can be revived, then you can become that new person that God wants you to be. You can have a new relationship with God, and I'm telling you what it means is being born again. That, that's what it's all about. Nicodemus would would know how to worship God. Uh, he went to the temple to worship maybe every day. Uh, but he did not know what it meant to be born again. And in our world that we live today, there's so many people that go to church, and they maybe read the Bible, but they don't know what we're talking about when we say the regenerated spirit that we live by every day. Jesus taught us about this in a very practical way one time. It's in Luke chapter 15, if you'd like to follow in it. In the Gospel of Luke chapter 15. Uh, Jesus gave the story of the prodigal son. He, he tells us that the prodigal son asked his father and said, Now, give me a portion of the goods that belong to me. And the father gave him the portion of goods that belonged to him. The Bible says he wondered away from his father's house. He left home. The Bible says that he wasted all of his money. The Bible says when he was finished wasting his money, he gave out of friends. Now, you know, life hasn't changed. Uh, uh, you can live a very sinful life, and you, you give out of money, and you give out of friends at the same time. 
Uh, just try it and you'll find it all works the same. He found himself working with pigs and even eating with the pigs and saying that in his father's house, it was all different. That in his father's house, there was plenty. So he decided to go back home. Now he went back to his father and upon the arrival of his father's house, the father said, this my son that was dead is now alive. Now, if it wasn't Jesus talking, I think you'd forget the story. But if Jesus is talking, it's good to remember the story and to see what it has to say to you and to me. What did the father mean? He certainly did not mean his son had been physically dead and that there was a resurrection because there the boy stood and it was the same son that went away from home. He could not have spoken out and said, his soul has been dead. Because the soul was the thing that caused him to wander away and to wander back, all in his soul. He decided to leave home with his own mind, nobody's mind but his, in his soul. It was with his emotions that he lived, that hilarious life of sin out there, and going his own way and doing his own things. And it was his own emotions that found him in the pig pen, disgusted, mad at himself, angry, wanting to go back home again. And so here was a man that had all of his human elements, his body, and also had his soul, but something was gone. The father said the spirit was dead. You say, what was dead? His communion with his father was dead. His fellowship with the father was dead. And any person who is away from God, something is dead inside. One third of them is dead. And God wants the regenerated spirit to live within us. That's the life that we receive from God when we're born again. He wants that spirit to dominate us, to lead us, to guide us, to function in us. And when it doesn't function, then we're like the prodigal. It's possible that this prodigal son story has more doctrine in it than we ever realized. That the father's house is our born again experience. And that the Father's house is the regenerated spirit. And that when we're doing our own thing, the Father says, you're dead. You know, little kids often speak to one another and say, you play dead? Or you wander away from God, you're not playing dead, you are dead. And you're dead in the most significant part of your body. You can receive, of your person, you can receive no revelation at that time. You can receive no spiritual direction at that time. You want to know something? If the Bible doesn't become real at that time. Sinners read the Bible and they don't see a thing in it at all. They just close it and lay it over the side. And let a person become born again and his relationship with God is right. And the Bible becomes the greatest book in the world. He reads it for hours and hours and hours saying, my, 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 my. I never knew this was in the book. It's been there all the time. But when that new spirit comes in there, that regenerated spirit. It feeds off the word of God. It's directed by the mighty power of the most high God. And the whole life functions through that regenerated spirit. And Jesus gave the story. He said, when the boy got back home, the father said he was dead. Now he is alive. He said, bring in the rejoicing, bring in the feast, bring in the great things, because this, my son that was dead, is alive. And the Bible says there's more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner that repenteth and over 99 just ones. If you want heaven to rejoice, let a person that's dead in their soul come alive in their spirit and, they, and there's rejoicing in heaven. The whole of heaven rejoices. And I just like to see heaven rejoice, don't you? Amen. I like to see heaven rejoice. The regenerated spirit, the born again spirit, that thing within you that makes you know that you're a son of God and a child of God and a person of God. And that power within you that guides your lives, that makes you say no to sin and to say yes to Jesus. It makes you say, now listen, it's time to worship God. And it don't matter how weary you are in your body or how tired you are in your mind, your spirit says, I'm boss here. And you're going to do it like I say. And that regenerated spirit is functioning and working in there, guiding and directing in there, and you're different from the rest of the world. You're one of these born-again creatures. And I say it's great.
Man's greatest, greatest exploration is not to the moon. Man's greatest exploration is what we call inner space. On the inside of this regenerated spirit, the true life of a man begins in the world of spirit when that human person's spirit comes alive in God. In Romans 8 and 16, it says that his spirit then bears witness with God's spirit. His spirit bears witness with our spirit and that we know something, that we know that we are the children of God. You can never know that you're the children of God or a child of God or a person of God until you're born again. Being born again with that regenerated spirit gives you a knowledge that you are truly a born again person. Now there are religious people who will not say, I'm born again. You say, why? Well, very simple. They're not born again. They, they, if you're born again, you know it. When you were born the first time, you knew it. No, no doubt about it. And everybody else knew it. And, and when you get reborn, you know it, and everybody else knows it. So for the person who says, I don't know whether I've been born again or not, we'll say, honey, get it. Because when you get it, you're going to know it. And not only you know it, everybody else will know it. They tell me even the dogs and the cats know it. That's what they say. Yeah. That they, they, they say, man, is sure nice around here since that old bulldog got saved. You know, <laughs> everything's so much nicer. Everything's changed. And so the true witness, the true witness of a person saying, I am a child of God, is when that spirit within us, that regenerated spirit, takes over our lives and we begin to live by the spirit. In John 6 and 63, it says, it is the spirit that quickeneth. It is the spirit that quickeneth. We have got to learn that the things that are living within us are living because of the Spirit of God. The things that are moving in us are moving because of the Spirit of God. This church is here because of a movement of the Spirit somewhere. The, the, the growth of a, of a Bible college has to do with the, with the movement of the Spirit within us. It is the Spirit that quickeneth. It's the spirit that moves things. It's the living spirit that causes us to be the people we are. You're in this class right now because of a movement of your spirit. Your, your natural man, your soul of compassion said, don't do it. Your spiritual man said, get up from there and get going. And so you're here by the movement of the spirit of God. It is when God's spirit unites with that human spirit that the children of God come into great strength and great power. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15 and 45, these words. He says, the second Adam was made a quickening spirit. That second Adam, the Lord Jesus Christ. And that we are born again by the power of that second Adam. We're not joined to the first Adam, but we're united to the second Adam, and we are made a quickening spirit. Yes, in our corporal body, we were born of the first Adam. But our lives are not moved by the first Adam. Our lives are moved by the second Adam, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. And it says that he is that quickening spirit making things come alive within us. Your, your, your corporal body is what we call world conscious. It is earth conscious. Uh, your spiritual body is heavenly conscious, divinely conscious, uh, spiritually conscious. It is where God dwells, and that's what we're talking about, the regenerated spirit, that spirit within us that just makes all the difference in the world as to what we are, who we are, where we're moving to, what we're doing in God, and when that regenerated spirit comes into being, what a life, what a life it is to live. We can look in the lives of the apostles and, and see that thing so dramatically uh, when they began to live by their spirits. Look at Simon Peter. Uh, what a solical person he was, related to a solical life, a mundane situation. And as that regenerated spirit came in, well, they had to give him a new name. They, they, he moved over in God so big and so strong and began to live a regenerated life by the regenerated spirit. And it was so positive and it was so strong until he had to have a new name to live up to the new experience new experience that he had come to have in God. When we look throughout the Word of God, we find the most amazing differences 
in a person that's living in his solical self and a person who comes to live in his spiritual self. And in that regenerated spirit, God said in that Romans 14 that we read to you, verse 17, that you not only have God's righteousness in that regenerated spirit, and you're made right with God, you have God's peace. This world does not know peace in its solical parts. You see, this world does not know peace in its solical parts. It, we could just explode inside and, and describe that to you. There has never been a time in the history of the world when so many people are having problems with other people as right now. And almost all of those problems are what we call solical problems. They have to do with a mind, the emotions, and the will. There's never been a time when Christian people, uh, I guess you should do that <laughs> around the word Christian, are having so many problems living with one another, being kind to one another, being generous to one another, because they are not living in that, in that regenerated spirit that God gave them. It is not sufficient to be born again. We must live in the regenerated spirit. And that regenerated spirit, God said, there's not only righteousness. Thank God for righteousness. But he says that regenerated spirit is peace. Now you live in a world that's shaking. You live in a world in turmoil. You live in a world of total confusion. Never were there so many confused people as there are right now at this moment. They don't know what to do. They don't know where to turn. It's a moment to breathe deep of the Spirit of God and say, Lord, I'm going to walk in your Spirit. I'm going to talk in your Spirit. I'm going to breathe in your Spirit. And I'm going to show the world what a regenerated life is. <laughs> One lived by the Spirit of God. I'm going to live in peace. I'm absolutely in peace. We're not going to be part of the turmoil of this world. The, the, we're not going to be part of the storm that's blowing in this world. When we look at a man like, uh, like, uh, like Noah, it, it amazes me. The very word Noah means quiet. And he lived in a world that was shaking itself to pieces. He lived in a world that was tearing itself apart. He lived in a world that was finally totally destroyed. But you know, he wasn't part of that thing. Are you hearing me? He lived in his regenerated spirit. He lived in his regenerated spirit. He was not part of that problem. He was not part of that sorrow. He was not part of that turmoil. And when the, flood, and when the floods came and took him away, it did not move him one bit. He wasn't there. He was with God in safety and in peace. I want with all my heart to see the Christian people of my generation live by the power of their regenerated spirit. I want to live by it too, by the way. I have to remind myself every day, just like Paul did, can I preach to others and I myself be a castaway? Wouldn't it be a shame to speak to you about the regenerated spirit and then my, my living in my solical parts? Would that be a contradiction? If I told you to be at peace with all men and I was quarreling with every man I met, and I was angry at everybody I saw, and I was having court cases against everybody I could think of, my wife and I weren't getting along. She was living downstairs and I was living upstairs and I wouldn't let her come up. <laughs> she wouldn't let me come down. See what a contradiction it would be? There are people that are living a contradiction to what we're talking about, the regenerated spirit. The regenerated spirit is a peaceful spirit. And then Romans 14, 17 says it is a joyful spirit. The regenerated spirit is a rejoicing spirit. I've told you about telling a woman one time something, and I, I, I'm beginning to wonder if all of us shouldn't do it all the time. She had gone to every doctor possible. She'd gone to Mayo Clinic a couple of times, and they just couldn't find anything wrong with her. The only thing that was wrong was her husband's pocketbook was just getting flatter all the time. And, and, and she'd get mad at the doctors because they couldn't find anything wrong with her. And finally, she came to me, and, and, and told me the whole story, and I just listened. When, when she got through, I said, now, you're going to do what I tell you to do? And she says, I will. I says, all right, now, you got to do it. She said, what do you want me to do? I said, I want you every day to go to the mirror 25 times and laugh out loud at what you see. 
Well, she was angry, of course. That was the solical part. And I said, you promised me you'd obey. I want you to see that you do it and mark them down so I know that you're doing it, please. Did you know by the next Lord's Day, she was completely well? You said, no, how could she be well? The Bible tells you that a merry heart doth good like medicine. So I gave her the medicine she needed. She needed the medicine of a merry heart. And when she got the medicine, and some of you would be better off if you laughed more. <laughs> and that's what we would call living by the regenerated spirit. The regenerated spirit, Romans 14, 17, is right with God in holiness and purity. The regenerated spirit. It's also a life of peace. The peace of God passeth all understanding. And then it is a life of joy. That where we have the regenerated spirit functioning, moving in our lives, and we are not moved by what we see or what we hear, but we are moved by the mighty power of God that has made us to be the sons and the daughters of God. Oh, there was never a time in the history of the world when we need to live by our regenerated spirit so badly as we do right now. May God help every one of us to live by that beautiful spirit that came to us today. We came back home like the prodigal son did. We came back home to God, and we came back home to God. God said, this, my son that was dead, is now alive. And we came alive in him, and then we began to live by the regenerated spirit. It's a great life. It's a great life. Are you ready to live that life? I am too.